Well hello Vans, let's get rolling with the Elder Scrolls Online. I've made seven previous episodes, this one however will mark the beginning of the actual game's release. It is March 30th, I am using the five days early access. I've already got started here, let's take a look at my character. This is going to be my main, hopefully. I mean I'm not going to set this in stone because I might want to change later on. But anyways, this is a level 4 Imperial Dragon Knight called Vonicus. In the beta someone took that name but now I was able to reserve it and I'm very happy happy because I usually like to get names that sound like whatever race I'm playing. This is an Imperial. I do have the Imperial Edition. Um, let's take a look at, let's see, what do we want to look at first? How about my skills? So, I'm going to be leveling up Draconic Power first and foremost. I already have Spiked Armor and Dark Talons. Earthen Heart, I have Stone Fist, Art and Flame, I have Fiery Grip, and I'll sort of go over those skills as we uh, fight. This is my character. I spent a couple of, um, not just a couple of minutes, but a lot of minutes customizing him, and I think I'm going to make a video where I show the creation process. And uh, so you guys can probably look forward to that if you haven't seen it already. Okay, so basically how this series is going to work is I am going to be recording about 15 to 20 minutes every Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's going to take the place of Let's Play Oblivion. The Let's Play Oblivion series is going to be pushed to Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we are just going to be having an adventure in the Elder Scrolls Online and doing all sorts of different things. And it's going to vary from episode to episode. It's not going to be linear. And I think it's going to be really fun. On top of that, I'm also going to be making a bunch of different tutorials and stuff like that. So, in our journal right now, we have a quest called Quiet the Ringing Bell, with the Covenant driven from Davin's Watch. We've actually driven the Covenant away from that already. Um, Tanva oh, by the way, I am also in the Ebonheart pack, so I'm aligned with the Dark Elves, the Nords, and the Argonians. Tanvil and Doril has asked me to return the living weapons known as Balrith the living weapon known as Balrith to its cell. I should head west to Davon. Ugh, I cannot read. I should head west of Davon's Watch to Ash Mountain. There, I should be able to find Tanvil's son, Garen, who is already working to res return the creature to the depths of the volcano. Don't know why I was having so much trouble reading that paragraph. Anyways, we are actually in Morwind. In the distance, there you can see Red Mountain, and we need to go over there in the distance to um, return the ashes of Balrith, which was this giant flaming red monster thing that helped us uh, repel the Daggerfall Covenant. So very cool and I wanted to show you guys in my inventory really quick all of the bonuses that I've got. I'm probably going to make a separate video uh, for all the pre-order bonuses and things but if you look at miscellaneous as you can see I have three pets here the Imgakin, uh, the Nibine Mud Crab, and the Pet Scuttler or the scuttler, I mean. The Imgakin is get from is gotten Jesus Christ, I mean, just my I'm just so excited, like my words are all jumbling around. The Imgakin is um, you get this from participating in the beta. Uh, the mud crab you get from the Imperial Edition and the Scuttler you get from pre ordering any version of the game. The Pledge of Mara is a like unique quest that you can do, but you need someone to do it with and I believe maybe they have to be female. Probably not. In this day and age you can probably uh, do some gay stuff. But uh yeah. Um, this is basically like a marriage thing and you can get some rings that increase your experience I'm going to probably make a separate video for that and we also get all these treasure maps and Yeah, and uh, is my monkey still following me? There he is I'm using the monkey currently because that's going to be the most like unique thing I think as uh, the game goes on less and less people are gonna have this because you can only get this monkey if you play the beta anyways if we press H, we also get the Imperial Horse. You have to actually go to a stable and buy it, though. You don't just automatically get it. Um, and what's nice about that... Hello, Spectral Assassin. What's nice about that is that um, the horse is basically free. It costs one gold. I already made a video about how to get a horse. And so it's nice. It's a nice little bonus from the Imperial um, version that you can start out with a horse to uh, move around much faster. So let's see where we are in accordance to where we need to go at the moment. So this... Ebonheart. What? Okay, so that's actually called Ebonheart. Okay. Anyways, I got a little jumbled up here. We are in Morwen at the moment, and we want to head all the way over here to Garen and Doral so that we can get rid of these ashes. And I'm going to make my way over there, and then we'll continue from there. So I will see you guys in a second. My god, folks, I just had to traverse. You see that lava in the distance? Yeah, there's all this lava back there, and I'm sure many of you have already explored this location. As we go on, um, you know, we'll start doing things that you guys haven't seen, for those of you that aren't playing the game. Because I know a lot of you have already watched the ESO gameplay uh, from various YouTubers, maybe including myself. But anyways, yeah, I had to traverse that freaking lava, and uh, I almost died. I was, like, literally one hit away from dying, and my ho I couldn't get back on my horse. So this is really, really, really interesting thing that they put into the game, where you can actually, like, the environment is actually 
a hazard. I mean, I know what PvE yeah. is, player versus environment, um, but that's usually in the case of, like, monsters and things. But yeah, you have to actually traverse all this lava, and I actually had to jump over a bunch of stuff to get to where I need to go, which is... Looks to be over this bridge somewhat. I don't know how well the quality is going to hold up when it's uploaded to YouTube. I've mentioned before that the quality gets uh, degraded. But my god, man, this looks so, 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 so good. I'm very happy with the aesthetic of the game. And I really don't understand any of the, uh, the disappointments with at least how the game looks. They've really done a good job in creating the world so far from what I've seen. Okay, so let's hop off our horse, which... What if I named... How do you view the horse? Is there any way... I know they're definitely probably is um what did i name the horse oh i named it light mirror because it's white and like shadow mirror is black i know it's it's a super creative name anyways here's garen and doral let's talk to him good to see you here soldier we'll need all the help we can get your father told me to report to you garen and i'm glad he did Balreth, it seems, does not want to go quietly back into his cage. And like I said, I did this off camera, but there was a quest involving Balrith, and it was a giant flaming Atronach thing. It wasn't actually an Atronach in Elder Scrolls lore, but it was, you know, something like that. Okay, complete quest. But I'm sure Balrith was the only way to defeat the Covenant's army. But it seems he may have been a bit hasty in his actions. That doesn't sound good. What do you mean? The ritual Father gave me to rebind Balrith isn't working. Something's gone wrong. Daedra are pouring from the volcano, and I'm worried about the nearby towns. We need answers, and we need them fast. What would you have me do? Our best bet is to go back to the source. The mages that first bound Balreth. Some of them are buried at the necropolis to the south, a place called Othrenus. I've sent a scout, Onuja, to learn what we need. Go there and aid him. I'm on it. Cool, okay, so we started a quest, Mystery of Othrenus. Alright, what am I doing? Um, find Onuja, that sounds good to me. Let's see where this is in relation to where we are right now. Not that far. I'm gonna press H to get on our horse again. Also, you can upgrade... I know a lot of you are already gonna know some of these things that I'm saying, but for those of you that don't know, you can upgrade the horse. Oh, it seems that that bug is still evident where you keep uh, dismounting the horse when you don't want to. But yeah, you can upgrade your horse... Um, based on what you feed it, the stuff that you feed it costs a bit of gold. Like, what? how much gold do we have at the moment? 261 gold. So, yeah, it costs, like, around 250 to buy one thing, like, maybe an apple. And I forget which increases what. But you can basically increase, you know, the carrying capacity of the horse and the stamina and the speed and whatever based on what you feed it. Okay, so we have a quest marker here. Let's hop off. Good thing to know that my monkey is fast enough to uh, travel with me even when I'm on my horse. Look at him, he's so cute. Look at him, alright. What's up, Anuja? You startled me. Are you just playing tricks on me, dry skin? Garen sent me. How can I help? Oh, that's good then. I'm pleased to see a friendly snout. That's much better than all the dead faces lately. Why is it elves who die cannot stay in the ground? I don't know, man, but uh, complete that quest. Just need some old runes, he said. He didn't mention how active the dead are here. What can I do to help? You're the sun on my scales. Your answer lies with Mavo Silareth. He bound the brother of strife long ago. We need his knowledge, but a highborn like him could be... Um, difficult. How do we make Mavos cooperate? Oh, you can't make a highborn serve. You need flattery. If we're properly respectful, he may appear. My scrolls say there's a shrine on the east rise, and one on the west. Honor him at both, then meet me at the center of Othrenus. I'll do this. Go, and remember, try to sound humble when you chant Mavos's name. When you meet me at the center of Othrenus, be ready. There is more to do there. Okay, goodbye. Alright, and one thing I didn't mention was that my guy is going to be a tanky um, sword and shield wearing dude that's going to be heroic and stuff like that. We'll get more into the RPG aspects as we move along, but anyways, a whole bunch of action is happening in front of us. But where do we need to go? To the left and to the right here. Um, I think we'll head in this direction first. Do we actually need to go through here? Probably. This looks like to be an enclosed area. So we'll head up here. That guy over there has one of the skills that I have. That flame chain thing. And uh, as soon as we get in some combat here, I'll show you guys all the skills that I have. 
All right, so we have a tomb here, and it looks like we have a couple of, not just a couple, my god, a whole bunch of people that are level 7. We are only level 4. Okay, so we're going to press 3, which gives us uh, that armor that looks like we have a crazy medical condition at the moment. And 2 will be our CC for the moment. Didn't activate, though. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to actually... No, we're going to die instantly because these people are... <laughs> are three uh, levels higher than us. Okay, choose where to revive nearest Waste Runner here. I'm gonna go ahead and go here. Maybe we can get through this quest without actually um, fighting these people. So let's try and activate this or something. Can we? <laughs> Chant at Shrine of Reverence. All right, well, I wanna do that, but it's not. Okay, there we go, let's use that. Okay, that seems to have worked. Not sure if I'm too low of a level to be here. Like, I shouldn't be here because these guys, like I said, are three levels higher than me. Maybe we should have been doing something else. I'm um, still getting the hang of this game. It'll come in time. But anyways, we're going to head over to the other shrine and pray to that. But yeah, um, just to talk about the skills that I have, let's take a look at them. So, Ardent Flame, Draconic Power, and Earthen Heart are the three, like, subdivisions of the uh, Dragon Knight class. For Ardent Flame, I have Fiery Grip, which basically pulls targets towards me with a chain and does fire damage. Draconic Power, Spiked Armor gives us some armor and also returns some physical damage. Uh, Dark Talons is CC, or Crowd Control, basically. It stuns them for 3.6 seconds and does some damage. And Earthen Heart is deals 25 physical damage and knocks down enemies for 3 seconds, so that's also some CC. I have not used Earthen Heart... Actually, Earthen Heart isn't the name of the skill. What's the name of the skill? I have not used Stone Fist yet. But one thing that I heard online is you want to sort of get a skill point in every skill that you can, or at least one in each of the, um, let's take a look, one in each of the de denominations of your classes so that you'll start leveling them all up. As you can see here, Fire Grip is 4, even though I haven't even used it once yet. Dark Talons is 2, I've only used it once. Spike Armor is 4, and Stone Fist is 4, I haven't even used Stone Fist. So if you put a point in each one, you'll start leveling it up, like, automatically no matter what. So that's a sort of a little tip for you guys. Okay, now this should be Anuja. By my egg, you startled me. Please, no more. Were you very humble as you sought the honor of Mavos' presence? If by humble you mean did I just cut my hands together in a prayer formation, uh, yes. What's the next step, Onuja? It's time. Honor Mavos at this brazier in the center of Othrenus. By the way, the dead may want your blood for daring to disturb a highborn. I'll just wait over here until you're done. Oh, don't be like that, Onuja. I see you've got some sort of weapon right here. You could help me out. Anyways, goodbye. Um, alright, so we have a whole bunch of people. Now, you can group with them and, uh, short, sort of share the experience. You get more experience as the uh, MMOs usually do. Okay, survive the anger of the dead. So, I think that quest is already active, so we just need to survive. I don't think we need to actually activate anything, right? Or do we? What does that say? Is that just the guy behind it? Probably. Yeah, alright, so I think we just need to survive all of these Othrenus ghosts. And, uh, looks like we don't even have to do anything anyways because all these guys are around it and they're sort of protecting me. Huh, there's two, like, weird, a green and a blue light in the distance. Alright, let's help these guys out. We're gonna go ahead and activate my armor buff here and then, uh... I wanna use some of my skills, but they keep killing them before I can do anything. Alright, these guys look to be praying, so I probably need to actually pray near this, but it's not giving me a... Use, I, I can see something. It's popping up every couple seconds. Where are you? Come on. It's right there, as you can see. Alright, screw it. We'll just keep fighting. Alright. Come here, off Renis Ghost. No, this is just a guy moving around. Come on. Alright, what do I need to do? Oh, it looks like we're done. Okay. Derp! That was a huge derp on my part. Sorry, folks. Anyways, a new job. make it look easy. At least... What I saw when I wasn't hiding and squealing like a hatchling. I know I'm not brave, but did you hear his voice? Mavos has returned. Great, where can I find him? He's important, so he gets the important looking tomb. It's the largest crypt in the necropolis. I'll, uh, be gathering my notes. My god, man. Grow some balls. Or, do I don't even know if Argonians have balls. Maybe not. Maybe so. Who knows? Anyways, I'm sure there, I'm sure someone in the comments knows and will definitely make a comment. Anyways, the large, important-looking tomb. Man, look at the lighting on those mountains. I, I, I just like the aesthetic a lot. I said that many, many times, though. Okay, so this is the large-looking tomb, and I think that ghostly image up ahead is actually Mavos. Yes, it is. So, you're the Gua who raised me. 
This had better be astonishingly important, or I'll do unspeakable things to your fleshy mortal form. Oh, don't be like that. Balrith, the brother of Strife, is ravaging is ra is ravaging Stonefalls. The greatest mage of my era, and you wake me for something they could have read in a book? It's pathetic. But clearly, I must aid my people again. No death worms for you just yet. Good, I'm not really partial to death worms. Complete the quest. I knew skeletons weren't enough. I should have summoned some Daedra to protect this place. Or a fire, Atronach. That would have been good. Can you teach me how to bind Balrith? I don't remember how. You don't look at me that way, worm. I'm dead. Details fade over time. If you want to learn, I'll conjure a vision of the past. That should show you. What do you need from me? Ritual implements. A skull and a candle. Unless tomb robbers got them. Look in the vaults to the east and west. There's a puzzle lock on each one, and uh, no, I don't remember the solution. Good luck with that. I'll crack the puzzle and get the implements. I can't perform the ritual without my implements. I don't even have hands to pick them up. That's annoying. East and west tombs, candle and skull. And whatever you do, don't, um, do something, you know, uh, that thing. Okay, I'll try not to do, you know, something, that thing. All right. So, we have leveled up, and also it said that my spike armor skill, whatever, can be morphed. Let's go ahead and level up really quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put health up to three. And then, in our skills, we have molten weapons. Increases weapon damage of nearby allies for two. So, it's a steroid to uh, allies' weapons, and I'm guessing you as well. Yeah, it said that, didn't it? Bonus is increased by 100% on caster, yes. Okay, and we also have Searing Strike deals 21 flame damage and deals 35 flame damage over 8.5 seconds. And what is this? What does it mean when we can morph an ability? Select an ability that you wish to morph spiked armor for into. Morphing this ability will cost one skill point. Razor armor increases armor by 125 and returns 10 physical damage, so it's basically a uh, bigger version of that. Or volatile armor increases armor by 20. Deals 16 physical damage on... Oh, it says new effect. Deals area damage on activation and damage reduction increased on activation. I think I'm going to go with volatile and we'll morph that. Very, very, very cool. Okay. And now we have one location over here and one location over there. Do they both have those lights that I have no idea what they are coming from them? Um, I'm not seeing the lights in that direction. Let's see what we can find over here. It looks like we actually won't have to go inside something like I thought. Okay, so this is probably the puzzle that they were talking about. Alright, so shrine, we can use these. Let's try and figure this out. Okay, that turned that blue. Maybe we just all have to turn them the same color or something? We can't use this. Nothing's happening. Or is it? Huh. Okay, so the thing in the back, that's blue, so I'm guessing we have to turn all these blue. That would be the smart thing, wouldn't it? Alright, so... Oh no, that one's green. Okay, so there's three lights, so it's green, blue, and green, it looks like. So, is this going to change the color? No. Okay, there we go. There's green. Now, I'm assuming this one has to be blue. There we go, and this one should be green. Now, did that do anything? Yes. Put something in the chest, which is probably going to be the skull. This humanoid skull was painted a dark shade of red. We'll take that. Cool beans. We've got one of the two implications. The other one is the candle. Not sure if it's going to be the same puzzle. That puzzle is not hard. Looks like they retained the uh, easy as shit puzzle scheme from Skyrim. Um, okay, looks like we have the same puzzle over here. This time it's red, yellow, and blue. I wonder how many people are having trouble with this, like, typing in the thing. Can anyone help me? I, I have no idea how to do this. Or, of course, it's super, super easy. At least it's not like, uh, you know, that one puzzle where when you change one, they all change. I thought that's how it was going to be, and that would be kind of annoying, but this is not bad at all. Just matching the lights. All right, so turn green, and you need to turn blue. You have to think, like, if this was supposed to ward off people or something, who's really going to have trouble with this, you know? 
Okay, in the chest we have the Kwama Grease Candle. This is a simple white candle rendered from the fat of a subterranean insect. You know, it would be interesting if that subterranean insect was a Charis. Not sure if the lore matches up or anything, but uh, if you guys remember in Skyrim, the Charis were a subterranean insect species. Okay, let's go back to this guy and uh, see what we can do. Ah! You have the skull and candle. I do. You want me to be impressed. That would be nice. You can gather small objects. Good for you. Now stand back while I perform the ritual. And if you're not successful? You doubt my skill? If it's any consolation, what's left of you won't take much effort to clean up. Oh, that's reassuring. Me? I'm a ghost already, so it hardly matters. Very well, I'm ready. Good for you. Prepare yourself. I am prepared. Uh-oh. We've been given a loading screen here. One thing I also do like is the loading screens. They have a nice art style. Okay, better looking than you. Wow, that's a funny name. But, um, um, it's not true, though. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. So, we... Oh, that's right. We're in the past now. Okay, and what's up, Hayden? It's too powerful. Portals everywhere. We're doomed. Who are you? Where did you come from? Never mind that. What's going on? We're trying to restrain Walrath. But Daedric portals keep opening. Those of us who've survived Walrath are being pulled down by cursed steps. How can the portals be closed? Take what's in this pouch. Throw it in the portals. I was supposed to avoid my coming death prevents me. Find Magister Enus when you're done. She should be north of here. Okay. Alright, and I think that's going to do it for this first episode of The Elder Scrolls Online. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure if I want to do it completely linear. Uh, that's not really going to work out because I'm going to be playing this game in between episodes. But if you guys want to see more of a linear um, style, I could record them all at the same time you know, every week, and then just continue on. Or if you guys want to just, just see me hop in and out of this game and do different things every time, you know, we'll be progressing a lot faster. Uh, you know, just leave comments if you're swayed one way or the other. Anyways, thanks for watching this first episode of Let's Play The Elder Scrolls Online. I am really excited for this game. I'm going to be sinking a lot of my time into it and uh, going to be creating a guild and just a whole bunch of different stuff, and we're going to be delving into this uh, later on. So thanks for watching. My name is Grafana. As always, my god, I'm going to die. Have a great day. Bye. I'm dead. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed that video, help me out by liking it, adding it to your favorites, and sharing it on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to go the extra mile, go ahead and follow my social pages as well as my Twitch channel. The links are in the description below. Finally, if you want to subscribe and or watch another video that's probably going to be related to this one, you can click the big ol' annotations on the screen. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.